This incident happened just a day before Thanksgiving. There's not a whole lot that police can do about domestics. Lexington police responded to yet another homicide in Lexington. She was so smart and she always made sure me and my brother were good with everything. Last week, she got a life-changing phone call one day before Thanksgiving. This mama's girl learned they wouldn't see each other again. Around 1.30 p.m. on Thanksgiving Eve, Lexington, Kentucky police responded to the Masterson Station neighborhood to a home in the 2800 block of Bay Colony Lane after a man reported that he shot his wife. Upon arrival, they would find the body of an unresponsive woman suffering from multiple gunshot wounds. The shooting happened at a home near the 2800 block of Bay Colony Lane, where they found a woman deceased from a gunshot wound. The Fayette County Coroner's Office identified the victim as 47-year-old Talena Henderson, who was sadly pronounced dead at the scene at 2.30 p.m. According to the coroner, someone else was inside the home at the time and saw what happened and is cooperating with police. No one else was hurt in the incident. He believes a domestic dispute led to the shooting. Lexington police arrested 59-year-old Stephon Henderson without incident, and he's being held at the Fayette County Detention Center. Court records show Talena filed a petition for a protective order against Henderson on November 20th, saying he had threatened her. That petition, according to court paperwork, was not immediately granted. The court action section of the petition included the comment, no imminent threat. Instead, a hearing was scheduled for November 30th. Selena was murdered just three days after attempting to file this emergency protective order. A look into Henderson's criminal history revealed that he pleaded guilty in 1998 in Fayette County to aggravated assault and spouse abuse. He was sentenced to 90 days in jail, with 83 days of that sentence suspended. He also received two years probation. Her daughter, whom Talena was extremely close to, reflects on the emotional phone call she received just one day before Thanksgiving. Friends, family, and coworkers gathered for a memorial service on Sunday to share stories and memories of the woman who meant so much to many. Her son broke the news to his sister in Washington. I asked him, I said, what's the last thing that mom said to you um, about me? <laughs> she said, um, I wish Tamara could come home for Thanksgiving. Tamara, who's active duty Army and stationed out west, flew across country as quick as she could. The birthday present she had sent sat right outside the door. It was on the front step. She didn't get to bring it in. She didn't get to open it. Um, but I gave it to her, and I know she was happy. She had plans to come home and ask her mom to be a part of her wedding. My sole purpose is to carry her legacy and uh, get justice and fight for her like she would if something happened for me and my brother. A service was held Sunday to honor Talena's life. Her coworkers, friends, and family all joined together to share stories and memories of a woman gone too soon. Everybody loved my mama. She was like a, a piece of sunshine walking into a room and she lit up any room she went into. It's a light that she'll carry with her always. Tamara reminds us, you can't dim the sunshine that was her mom. I'm just going to continue to make her proud with everything I do. Tina and Stefan were married in March 2016. In March of 2021, the couple separated. Tina filed a petition to dissolve the marriage on November 21st. She also filed for an emergency protection order on the 20th. In that petition, Talena says that Stefan was verbally and emotionally threatening. Stefan's family, who knew Tina was filing for divorce in an EPO, says they were shocked to hear that things had gone this far. And, you know, on the behalf of my family, you know, I just want to say that we are beyond sorry, grief stricken in the highest of the highest. Sean Ray White says she has this message for her cousin now. Why? Why, Stefan? And that's the whole families. That, that's, that's all of us. Why? Why would you do that? Tina's daughter, Tamara Glover, was not at this afternoon's arraignment. And when asked about the protective order that was not immediately granted, she simply said she wants justice for her mom. She also wants the community to know who Talena was. My mama, my mother, she was a queen. Like, 
she was a queen. Like like I said before, yeah, um, she was my best friend, my twin. I'm so glad she blessed me with her looks and I look just like her. And I know when people see my face, they feel sad, but it's like, don't feel sad. When you look at me, you see her face. For other women dealing with domestic violence, Tamara wants them not to be afraid to speak up. Don't be scared. Somebody's going to hear you. Somebody's going to listen. And by any means, ladies, women in a situation like this, we, we have to protect ourselves and do whatever we got to do. Talena's daughter says she'll continue looking for justice for her mother. Neighbors were shocked and confused about the events that transpired. As they say, nothing like this ever happens in their quiet neighborhood. At the beginning of November, Lexington Mayor Linda Gordon said the city had seen more domestic violence homicides this year than ever before. Gordon announced earlier this month the implementation of It's Time, a new domestic violence prevention campaign for the city with phase two, bringing the conversation into communities set to start in January. Selena was a healthcare worker at UK Healthcare since 2001. The company issued a statement saying, we are grieving along with all those who knew and loved her. And we will of course offer support during this terrible time. I understand um, there are people that um, are down at the police headquarters that are being questioned. The shooting happened at a home near the 2800 block of Bay Colony Lane, where they found a woman deceased from a gunshot wound. This is the day before Thanksgiving. It's horrible for the, you know, for what's happened just in another person taking a person's life. But here at Thanksgiving and, and this, the, you know, the, we've got two families that are here. Police say 59-year-old Stefan Henderson was said to have given himself over to police without incident shortly after the shooting. It appears that there were some type of domestic problems here. Um, we have a black female who has suffered multiple gunshot wounds from the hands of another person. Oh, this shocked me to death. I can't believe nothing like it would happen. Cora Penny said she's lived nearby for more than 10 years. All the violence Lexington has seen this year has put her on edge. It's scary because when people got kids and your family, you want everybody to be safe and come home safely, but you don't know anymore. You just got to take one day at a time and live. It's like your last because we never know. Those that do harm often present a different uh, outside persona than what they do within the context of that relationship. So far this year, there have been at least 12 domestic violence homicides in the city. And Mayor Linda Gordon says that that's more than ever. Nonprofit and city leaders agree that it will take the entire community to stop the violence. Once a, a, a person is believed, that lifts the load off of them, off their shoulders a little bit, that they're not alone and people are going to support them. Their biggest fear is that not just of the person that's doing the harm. That is terrifying for survivors. On the other hand, it's also um, fear of not being supported. The city of Lexington announced a domestic violence prevention campaign this month. Greenhouse 17's executive director says she's glad to see that the community is stepping up. It's time. It's time that we understand it, that we recognize it. But beyond that, it's going to be time that we do things about it, that we take actions. Henderson appeared in court on Monday for his arraignment via video conference. He is currently being held at the Fayette County Detention Center on a $1 million bond. The case remains ongoing.